Welcome to the France 24 Observers, the show that's based on our network of ordinary people who are our eyes and ears around the world. We begin today in Malta, a little island south of Italy that is at the crossroads of the Mediterranean between Africa and Europe. A wealthy Maltese couple, Chris and Regina Catramboni, were out on a yacht one day when they saw a coat floating in the water. It probably belonged to one of the thousands of migrants who die every year trying to get to Europe. The Catrambonis decided to do something about it. Um, the boat belongs to Chris and Regina. It's a 40-meter boat. On the boat, we have two drones. We have a clinic, we have a doctor, we have a paramedic. And above all, we have a, a, a professional search and rescue team. When the Rescue Coordination Center informs us of a boat in distress, we go and search for the boat. If they don't have life jackets, and many a time, very few have a life jacket, we give them the life jacket. Oh, wow. We need to keep them calm, tell them to sit down, because if people start standing up, then the boat will overturn. If the instruction has been to take people on our boat, we start with the most vulnerable. They are assessed by the doctor, they are given first aid, and then await instructions from the rescue coordination center on to whom we are going to hand over these people. The first rescue we had was a boat which was already taking in water. They actually had a water pump. The great majority of these people were um, Syrians and, and Palestinians. We've spent about five weeks in total out at sea. We've assisted over 2,200 uh, um, people. Um, Chris and Regina, rather than raising the funds and then starting the operation, decided to put their own funds in the hope that other people um, will be inspired to assist. Um, we appeal to everyone because we know that no matter what, people will still leave. To Ivory Coast in West Africa now, and a disturbing phenomenon known as the flying coffin. When someone dies, and it's not clear why, some Ivorians believe their coffin becomes possessed and leads the family to the presumed killer. Our observer, Julien, was at a funeral for a relative when he was dismayed to see the coffin take on a life of its own. When the old man died, we went to be with the family and mourn. That's what we do in Africa. People were saying the man had accounts to settle with someone. When the coffin was being carried in the family courtyard, it suddenly went toward one of the houses. People said the coffin was trying to find the person behind the man's death. Then the coffin started heading toward a hut right in the middle of the village. That's where something horrible happened. There was an old lady hiding in the hut. The coffin kept banging against the side of the hut. Finally, the coffin came down on top of her. Well, the people carrying it dropped it on top of her. The lady died under the coffin's weight. The people carrying it swore that it was the coffin itself that did it, not them. The question to ask is, was it an act of vengeance? The idea that the coffin sought the old lady out didn't surprise the people in the village because they believed she was a witch. But when someone passes away, I don't think it's because of witchcraft. There has to be another explanation. It's dangerous when coffins go around deciding who dies. I've tried to find out what happened, whether anyone was ever held responsible. It's a real shame. Julien said some people in the crowd tried to help the old woman, but the coffin bearers said they would suffer the same fate. Now for some other reports and images sent in by our observers. First stop, Turkey, where thousands of people have been demonstrating against the government's failure to intervene across the border in Syria, where the Kurdish city of Kobani is threatened by fighters from the Islamic State group. Our observer Yusuf was at one such demonstration in Ankara when it was violently dispersed by riot police. Some of the police held four fingers in the air, a gesture often used by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The four fingers signify solidarity for members of the Muslim Brotherhood massacred in Egypt last year. But Yusuf says it has taken on another meaning, that the police support Erdogan and are not going to tolerate anyone being critical of him or his government.
To Tel Aviv now, Israelis angry about a decision by their Supreme Court to shut down a retention center for migrant Africans in the country illegally. Hundreds of Eritreans and Sudanese were allowed to come back to Tel Aviv, and not everyone was happy about it. The migrants tried to give the demonstrators bouquets of roses, but it didn't do any good. The court had ruled that the supposedly open center in the middle of the desert amounted to a prison. Istanbul, Turkey, and two young Frenchmen who have just finished a long paddle across the Mediterranean. 14 months, 12 countries, four to nine hours paddling every day. Louis Wilmot and Douglas Coué did it to draw attention to the need to protect the sea's fragile ecosystem. Douglas is studying oceanography, so the pair sent back samples to his university, notably of toxic phytoplankton, which can be deadly to sea life. Finally today, volcano surfing. It happens in eastern Nicaragua on the slopes of the Cerro Negro volcano. Hotels and tourist agencies give thrill-seeking visitors a toboggan and a push. The surfers reach speeds of up to 65 kilometers an hour. That's it for this week. As always, you can find more reports from our observers on our website, on our Facebook and Twitter pages, and on our apps for mobiles. See you next time.